Mush Kid, a tale of dog sledding, friendship, and drool. Written by Katherine Fawcett, illustrated by Jocelyn Asnong. On race day, the usually peaceful meadow became a mad racket. Sixty dogs jumped up and down like popcorn kernels in a hot pan, paws grabbing the air and long pink tongues flopping this way and that. A barking frenzy echoed across the snow towards the mountains. These Alaskan racing huskies were well-trained athletes, and they could barely wait to start the flurry mountain sled dog challenge. Two minutes, announced the race marshal through a megaphone. But something wasn't right. Lulu, the shaggy black and white dog on Abby's team, was strangely still and quiet. Eleven-year-old Abigail P. Fenton pulled her hat down to keep the bitter January wind off her freckled skin. She called herself Abby the Great. After all, her great-grandpa was the famous musher who helped deliver emergency medicine by dog sled to sick children in Alaska. Kiwi, a twitchy black point dog, jumped over the gang line behind the lead dogs and landed on Nora's back. Nora nipped Kiwi's ear. The tussle began. Oh, not again, muttered Abby. She untangled a mess of harnesses, necklines, legs, and tails, and hoisted Kiwi back to her own side. Racing huskies are light enough to be lifted up easily, smart enough to follow the rules of pulling a sled, and strong enough to run like a blizzard wind. Nora and Kiwi began yapping and leaping up and down again. Lulu sat behind them, her head down. Beside Abby at the starting line was Daniel Brownfeather and his team. Oh, great, thought Abby. She tucked her braids inside her parka so Daniel couldn't yank them. Hey, mush kid, he yelled. Think fast. A snowball flew towards Abby. She ducked and it hit Kodiak, a stocky brown wheel dog closest to Abby's sled. Kodiak yipped. Next one's for you, shouted Daniel. Abby rolled her eyes. One minute, came the race marshal's voice, just long enough to give each one of her dogs a hug and a scruffle on the head. Remember, grand prize is a barrel full of juicy steak, she told Apollo and Sophie, her lead dogs. Apollo's diamond-studded red collar sparkled in the sunlight. He was the most experienced dog in the Fenton family kennel. But Lulu sat shivering. Her mouth was shut tight and her eyes darted from side to side. Abby kneeled down in the snow and rubbed behind her ears. Don't be scared, Lou. I know how you feel. It's my first big race, too. We'll be brave together. Lulu wiggled closer to Abby and wagged her tail. Only six miles and we're back here. It's our great adventure. Lulu gave Abby a doggy kiss. Abby wiped a slimy string of doggy slobber off her cheek and gave Lulu a hug. Ready? yelled the race marshal. The mushers took their places on the runners at the back of the sleds. Set? yelled the race marshal. The dogs tugged even harder on their lines. The handlers helped their mushers keep the sleds back. The barking was deafening. If the marshal didn't fire that starting gun soon, Abby was sure the dogs would... Bang! The mushers yanked their snow hooks free, let go of the brakes, and in a flash of fur and a blast of snow, they were off. Suddenly, all was quiet. No barking, no howling, just heavy breathing, the squish of paws and fresh snow, and the gentle whiz of the runners. The dogs flew through the meadow like miniature racehorses, heads bobbing up and down, ears flat, and tails back. Abby's team took the lead. The trail entered the woods. Snow-covered evergreen trees bowed forward as if to welcome the sled as it passed. Ha! she yelled, and the dogs turned left. Gee! and the dogs turned right. Hike! and the dogs ran even faster. 
The wind stung her face as they flew along the trail. It was a feeling Abby loved. She whistled to the dogs. They kicked snow backwards, and Abby squinted to keep it out of her eyes. She knew her great-grandpa would have done the same thing almost a hundred years ago in the Arctic. Kodiak ran with his back legs wide for a minute. Then, barely even slowing down, he squeezed out a little poop. Plop! It landed on the trail. Abby smiled as she thought of Daniel's team running over the stinky brown lump. But Daniel's team was far behind. In second place, they ran hard, but not hard enough to catch Abby's team. The trail narrowed. On one side was a steep slope that dropped off into a ravine. On the other side, a frozen waterfall. Beautiful, thought Abby. Suddenly, the sled swerved. Abby lost her balance. Whoa, she yelled, but the dogs didn't stop. She tried to grab the handlebar, but the sled was going too fast. Abby was flung over the side of the trail. Lulu looked back. The sled runners were empty. She saw the tracks. Abby was in trouble. Lulu barked like her tail was on fire. Digging her paws into the snow, she tried to get the team to stop. She turned around but tripped as the others kept going. She had an idea. Using her powerful jaws and sharp teeth like a chainsaw, Lulu chewed her neckline to free herself from the team. Kodiak growled. Lulu kept tearing at the line. Apollo turned around, then started to run faster, as he was trained to do. Before the leader could look back again, Lulu had broken the line. She let the harness slide over her head, and she was free. Lulu ran back along the trail and peered over the edge where Abby had fallen. There she was, wedged in a snowbank like she was buried in sand at a beach. I'm stuck, she shouted. Lulu inched her way down the slope, but the snow was too deep. Her front leg sank. She scrambled up, causing a little avalanche to fall onto Abby. She barked and barked, helplessly watching her mushers struggle in the heavy snow. Soon, Lulu heard whistling. It was Daniel Brownfeather. Lulu, what's wrong? What happened? He secured his team with a snow hook and looked over the edge of the trail. Help, hollered Abby. Hang on, mush kid. Daniel got his spare rope. He hooked one end onto the back of his sled and threw the other end to Abby. She grabbed it. Go, go, yelled Daniel. His dogs lurched forward. Abby held tight. Slowly, Daniel's team hoisted her out of the snowbank and up the mountainside. She was almost at the top when one of Daniel's lead dogs suddenly tripped. The whole gang, dogs, sled, and Abby, started sliding backwards. Abby held her breath and shut her eyes, but the leader regained his footing just in time. A few more steps, and they were back on the trail. That, said Abby, shaking herself off, was cool. She pulled snow from the neck of her parka and dumped it out of her mittens. She let Daniel help her into his sled. Lulu jumped in, too. She curled up in Abby's lap and licked her face with her rough, warm tongue. The musty, sweet, wet dog smell reminded Abby of hot chocolate. She squeezed Lulu tight. On by, yelled the other drivers as their teams passed Daniel, one by one. When Daniel's team finally finished, they were dead last. Abby was worried about her team, but soon saw that they were safe at the finish line. Thanks, Daniel, she said, climbing out of the sled. I owe you one. You lost the race because of me. Yeah, I guess my dogs are the tow truck team, said Daniel. But you know... If it weren't for Lulu, I never would have stopped. Suddenly, he grabbed one of Abby's braids and gave it a tug. She whipped her arms around and pulled his hat down over his eyes. The two started giggling. Friends, said Abby. Daniel fixed his hat. You bet. The two gave Daniel's dogs their water and meat mixture. Mushkid, 
Did I ever tell you about my grandmother, said Daniel, from Alaska? She always talked about the brave mushers who helped bring emergency medicine to her and her friends. Without your great-grandpa, my grandma might not have lived, and I wouldn't be here to save you. Funny how that works, eh? Abby's jaw dropped. You mean your grandma? My great-grandpa? But before she could finish, Apollo, Sophie, Nora, Kiwi, and Kodiak started howling as if to call their musher over. Abby wiped her nose on her mitt, put her hands on her hips, and shook her head at the dogs. You're very fast, she told them, but if we're going to win, we have to do it as a team. The race marshal overheard them. Sorry, Abigail, we can't give you first prize. Rules say musher and sled have to finish together. He handed their certificate for free steak to Daniel. The other mushers and I decided that your team deserves this. Abby took Apollo's diamond-studded red collar from around his neck and put it on Lulu. You can wear this for a while, she said. You're one brave sled dog. Lulu jumped up. She licked Abby's face like it was a dog food lollipop. Slobber flew everywhere. Okay, okay, just a sec. Abby reached into her pocket. She pulled out a handful of dog biscuits. Here you go, Lou. Even though they were snow-covered and soggy, Lulu woofed them down. Wait, said Abby, putting a biscuit back into her pocket. Let's save this one for next time. The Iditarod Sled Dog Race In January of 1925, the children of Nome, Alaska, were stuck with a diphtheria, a terrible disease. Many were in danger of dying unless they received emergency medicine called serum. Nome is on the shore of the Bering Sea, and the nearest serum was in Anchorage, more than 1,000 miles away. A severe blizzard made it impossible to deliver the medicine by airplane. Parents were afraid their children would die. No one knew what to do until 20 brave dog sled mushers had an idea. One by one, the mushers carried the serum in their sleds through the wilderness across frozen rivers and beside cliffs of snow. According to legend, a gust of wind tipped over the final musher's sled. The serum fell into the snow. With his bare hands, the musher dug the serum out of the snow stood his sled up and continued on. It took five days and seven hours to deliver the medicine to Nome. Many people owe their lives to those mushers and their dogs. Today's Iditarod sled dog race is a 1,049 mile journey from Anchorage to Nome to thank the heroic mushers of 1925. Jocelyn Asnong grew up among tall maple trees where she was raised by a pack of wild colored pencil crayons in a house made of paper and stories. When she was 19, she was kidnapped by an art school where they trained her with expensive supplies and diplomas. She escaped and now plays under the swirly skies of Banff, Alberta. When Jossie isn't painting, she can be found cautiously wandering through the high up snowy places wearing mittens. She is a collector of odd shaped thoughts, rare old ideas, and South Pole dreams. Catherine Fawcett makes up stories to get out of trouble and make her life more interesting. She spends summers in Canmore, Alberta with her husband, Musher Bob, Son Jack, Lulu the dog, and Sweetie the cat. Each winter, the family migrates to Whistler, Pemberton, B.C. with a gang of crazy Alaskan racing huskies for a season of dog sledding on the mountain trails. 
Catherine is especially inspired by messy kids and noisy dogs, creatures that make her heart smile and her imagination howl.